Hello and welcome back. In the last video we created this add income modal and added it to our main page. We also created separate helper functions for adding, deleting data from Cloud Firestore. In this video, we'll clean up this code by creating separate modal components for each of the components in our project. We'll have a component for add expenses, add income and display expenses. One challenge we'll run into is that these separate modal components will no longer have a view of the data. For instance, the add income modal needs access to the income state array. It will also need access to these helper functions to add, delete and display the data. One possible option is to create a separate modal component and then pass these functions and state via props to the modal. However, in this video, I'll show you an easier way of providing global access to these functions and data using the React Context API. Right, let's get started by creating these separate modal components. Make sure that the dev server is running by running npm run dev. We can then open up our project by going to localhost 3000. What I'd like to do now is create a separate modal component for each of our modals. This includes a modal component for add expenses, add income, as well as display expenses. We can do this by creating a new folder in our components directory. I will call this modals and I will now create a new component for each of these modals. Let's start with add income modal. For add income modal, I will create a new component by entering function add income modal and we'll return the content of the modal. I'll do that by grabbing all of this logic from here from the opening modal tag till the closing modal tag. And I'll paste this code in the add income modal component. We need to pass a few props to this new component. We need props for showing the component as well as a function for the on close event. In the props function, I will add a few props like show and on close. I will then replace these values with show and the function on close. We also need to add our input field refs to this component file. So at the top of our code, I will import use ref from react. In our component, I will create variables for amount ref, which is equal to use ref. And I'll create another variable and I'll create another variable for description ref, which uses use ref. We also need to copy over our helper functions like add income handler and delete income handler. So back in the page.js file, I will copy these handler functions, starting with add income handler, scrolling all the way down to delete income entry handler. And I will add it to the component handler functions. We also need to bring over our currency formatter helper function. For this, I will import currency formatter from lib slash utils. We also need to move over the use effect and I'll paste the use effect just above the return statement. Let's clean up the main page file. We no longer need this handler functions comment. We no longer need these two ref fields either. We also need to copy across the icon as well as the Firebase imports. I'll just paste that at the top of our component. We can also remove modal from the main file and add it to the add income modal component. Since we've copied across use effect, we also need to import use effect from React. I will remove use effect and use ref from our main page file. We can now import our new modal by saying import add income modal from components slash modals slash add income modal. Let's add our income modal to the code. We also need a show prop, which we have as show add income modal, and we'll set the on close prop equal to set show at income modal. We should also export our component function. So at the end of our modal file, I'll say export default at income modal. Now we find ourselves in a very interesting dilemma. We are getting a message saying that income is not found in our add income modal file. That is because in our root file, we are creating the income state. Later in the project, we will need a view of this income state in order to update this balance correctly. So we can't remove the state definition from the main file. Also, we cannot define income in the modal as well, as these would be seen as two separate states. The values will not carry over. 
So what we could do is add another property to our modal called income and then perhaps pass the income value along with it. But that is not the solution we will go with here. Instead, we will go for a built-in React solution for sharing states on a global level. This solution in React is called the Context API. The Context API allows us to move the state definition as well as any functions that change the state to a global level. That way, we've got instant access to the state values and functions from any component in our project. Let's create our context file. Back in our files, under lib, I will create a new folder called store. Within store, I'll create our context store. I will call it financecontext.js. You can call this file whatever you want. In order to create a context file, we will import create context from React. We'll create our context by creating a new variable called finance context. We will then call the create context function. And this create context function takes in the default values of our context. If you want, you can leave this object blank. It is recommended to populate it in order to assist us with auto completion going forward. We know that this context should store the list of income values, which is an array. We know we need a few functions as well. I will therefore also add a function called add income item. For the default values, we will just specify a blank function. I will also add the function for removing the income item. At this point, these functions do not need any logic. This is really just to assist us with autocomplete. Then we will create a wrapper function. This wrapper function will wrap our application and all components within this wrapper function will have a view of these values and functions. We can therefore create a provider function by exporting default function finance context provider. Because this provider function will wrap the rest of the application, we need to specify the children prop. And this function will return a new React component that we can get from the finance context dot provider. And in order for this provider to wrap the rest of the application, we can just write out children. It is this provider component that will make any states and functions defined within this context available to the rest of the application. So this provider function takes one prop called value. An example of a value in our case would be the income state. This means that if I specified any value for income at this point, I will be able to access that value from any component in our project. We'll have a look at how to do that in a second. But for now, let's create our state for income and we'll create that function for set income. This will use use state, which we get from React. And initially, this will be a blank value. Also remember to import use state from React. Effectively, this is replacing this definition of the state here, as we will be using the state from the context instead. I can remove this console log as well. So I will replace this value here with the state of income. Since these two values are the same, I can just omit that last part. I will also create these two functions, add income item, and we'll remove the logic for now. We need to make this an async function as well. And I'll also create the function for deleting income items. And I will also add these functions to the value prop. To make this a bit more readable, I will actually move these values to a new variable called values. And I will pass the values variable into the value prop. This provider component will wrap our application and make any values that we pass into this value prop available to any component in the application. So next we need to wrap our application with this provider component. We can do that by opening up the layout file in layout, we will now import our context from lib, store, and finance context. Here we will import finance context provider, and within the body tag, we will add this finance context provider component. We will move nav and children into this component. We can also see a very helpful message showing up in the console. Since Next13 uses server components by default, React components like context will not work correctly. So what we need to do is at the top of our layouts file, we need to add use client. Also in the finance context file, we also need to add use client. 
Next, I'm going to remove any logic related to income to the context file instead. That includes the logic to update Firestore as well as update the state. So what we'll do is we'll remove the logic in the add income handler that relates to updating the database like that involves all of the logic where we define the collection reference down to making the updates to the state. I will cut all of this logic and I'll add it to this add income item function in the context store. We will also add a parameter to the add income item function called new income. We therefore expect this new income object to be passed into this function. I will actually move the logic to clear those fields and I'll add it back in our modal file. We will also remove the logic from the delete income entry handler function. So I'll copy everything from doc ref all the way down to here. And I'll add that logic to the remove income item function in the context file. This function will expect to receive the income ID as input. So I'll add that to the parameter list. Also, if we receive any exceptions, I do want to throw those exceptions back to our main application. So below the console log, I will also throw the error. I will do the same for the remove income item function, throw error. This means that our context file will now expose the income array as well as these functions to add income and remove income to the rest of our application. We should now be able to finally resolve this error message. So back in our add income modal file, we will import something from React. We will import use context. We also need to import something from our context file from lib store finance context and what we need there is that finance context object so we need to make sure that we are exporting this i'll add export to this variable now in the add income modal file we should be able to see that context object which we do we will add a new line just below the states i will say const ctx for context equals use context and then we can provide the context that we're trying to access in this case it's the finance context object this context object will now give us access to all of the values that we specify here so that will give us the income state as well as these two functions so what we can also do is destructure this object and our input help will now give us the available values in this function we are getting this list of available objects because because in the initial state we provided this information here if we didn't do this then our input help wouldn't be very useful so back in our modal we can now import income from our context let's save this as you can see after saving this it's resolved our error message we now have income available However, we don't see any data yet. That is because our use effect, which is responsible for fetching the data when the page loads, is still sitting in our modal logic. Let's move this use effect to the context file as well. I will cut the use effect. And in our finance context file, right above when we render the component, I'll paste in the use effect. We also need to import use effect from React. And when we do that, we'll see a few errors showing up. These errors all relate to the Firestore functions that are not available yet in our context. So let's move those as well. Back in our modal file, I'll grab all of these objects related to Firebase. And I'll add those to our context file. After refreshing the app, we can click on add income and we can now see these values being populated. This is because when the app loads up for the first time, our finance context file will run which will trigger use effect, which will fetch the data from Firestore and then set our income state variable. Our model then fetches the income values from the context. And that is what gets rendered to the screen. At the moment, adding the entry and deleting entries will not work. So let's fix those up. From our context, we can now also import add income item as well as remove income item. In our add income handler function, we can now execute this new function and pass in new income. Because this function returns a promise, we need to await it, and we want to deal with any error messages that get returned. So I'll wrap this in a try-catch block. We can also write out any errors to the console. 
If adding the income item was successful, we can clear these fields. So I will move this up to our try block. In our delete income entry handler function, we can do the same. In our try block, we will then execute remove income item and we'll pass it a value of income ID. This function returns a promise, so we will await the result. If we receive any errors, we'll just write those to the console. Let's test this out. I'll try and delete a few entries, which works. And I'll add entries as well. Let's add something. There's 99. Add entry. Right, we have now added a context store to our project. We are now able to access this income array and these functions from any component in our project. In the next video, we'll do away with this dummy data for the expenses. We'll create the expenses modal and we'll update a new expenses collection in our Firestore database. If you like these videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.